Okay, in today's video, as you can see, we are going to go over a discussion and talk about how to calculate how energy is stored and the amount of energy that is stored in a capacitor. All right, now this is a general diagram I have of a capacitor. And when we talk about energy stored in a capacitor, we usually, you can say it two different ways. You can say that charge is stored, so capacitors store charge. But in order to store charge, the battery has to do work to move the charges from one plate to another. So really, when you're storing charge, the battery is doing work, and therefore what you're really storing is energy, and that energy can be released at a later time. Okay, so what we like to say is that the energy stored is equal to the work done by the battery to move the charges from one plate to another. So what the battery does is it takes the charges, the electrons, the negative charges, moves them from one plate to the other plate. When it does that, it has to do work. And just like when you have gravitational potential energy, when you do work, you store gravitation when you do work, you store gravitational potential energy. But in this case, we're not storing gravitational potential energy, we're storing electric potential energy. So the energy stored, the potential energy stored is equal to the work done by the battery. And that energy, we like to say, is stored in the electric field between the plates. So when all of the charges have been moved over, we have a positive plate and a negative plate, and we have an electric field that goes from the positive to the negative, and the energy is stored in the, in the electric field between those plates. Okay? So stored energy, stored charge, work, potential energy, the energy is stored in the electric field between the plates. Okay, now let's just look at a little bit more detail how we calculate that. Like how we calculate the work done, or really we talk about the amount of energy that's been stored, moving the charges from one plate to another. Okay, now this is the equation that we used previously to calculate the amount of work it takes to move a charge through a certain potential difference. As I mentioned earlier, when you do work, you store energy. In this case, we're talking about electric potential energy. So in order to store that energy, the battery has to do work. Or when the battery does work, it's going to store electric potential energy through the movement okay, of those electrons or through the moving of charge. All right. Now what we're going to do, as you can see here, we have a 9-volt battery. We have a switch. And this is kind of a schematic of a capacitor. These are the parallel plates for the capacitor. And we're going to take one unit of charge, which is Q, which is the electron, and we're going to move that from one plate to another. Okay, so I close the switch, and right when I close the switch, the charges start to move from one plate to another. And we're going to kind of look at this one electron at a time. So the first electron gets moved from one plate through the battery and to the other plate. And what we're going to do is now we're going to use this equation the amount of work done is equal to Q, the charge, through the potential difference through which that charge is moved. Okay, I'm going to do that right down here for the first electron. Okay, the work is equal to the amount of charge. The charge on electron is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. Now the question is, in this case, is what potential difference was that charge moved through? Well, you notice we have a 9-volt battery, and right when we close the switch, the charges start to move. But the very first electron, you think of it electron per electron, the very first electron, when the very first electron is moved from one plate to the other, when it's moved, not before, but when it's moved, there is no potential difference between those plates. So we have charge, we have no potential difference. So down here it's work is equal to the charge times the potential difference through which that charge was moved. Well, that charge was moved through no potential difference. So the work it takes to move the first electron is really zero joules of work. Okay, zero joules of work is done to move the first electron. All right. Now the next thing we have, of course, now we have a positive plate and a negative plate. And we're going to continue to do that, move the electrons over, link of it like kind of like moving them over one at a time, one at a time. That doesn't happen one at a time. But you can kind of think of it like that until we have almost all of the electrons have been moved over so we have this plate is almost fully charged, this plate is almost fully charged, the capacitor is only full, almost fully charged, but we have one last electron that we need to move. 
the battery can move one more electron. So we're going to move that last electron over like that. Now the plates are fully charged and no more electrons are moving from one side or from one plate to the other. Now let's calculate the amount of take, work it takes to move that very last electron. Using this same equation, now we have it, we're doing this kind of electron by electron. Okay, the amount of work is equal to the charge, Q, times the potential difference. What's the potential difference this time? Well, really, when we move the last electron, the capacitor is basically, almost basically, fully charged. So there's nine volts across the capacitor. So that electron is moved through a potential difference of nine volts. So we're now going to multiply that by nine. 1 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 times 9 volts is equal to 1.4 times 10 to the minus 18 joules of energy. Now this over here is zero. That's the work it took, the energy that was stored to move the first electron. This is the energy or the work it took to move the last electron or the energy stored. Now what we could do is we could add all those up and sum them up because the first one is zero, which we calculated. Then the next one moves through a little potential difference, so it's a little bit more than zero. And then the next one's a little bit more, and more and more and more, until the last one, this is the work it takes to move the last one. Now we could add them all up, but you could kind of see if we have the zero and the maximum amount, then the work is actually equal to one half the total amount of charge that's moved and the potential difference through which it's moved. Okay, so we can think of the whole amount of charge that's moved, and it's moved through 9 volts. Okay, so now you can see we have Q. This is Q, and this is Q. We changed it from this is usually written as a capital Q, and this is the potential difference through which it's moved. So the work done, the energy storage is equal to 1 half times Q times V. All right, now you, this is the same equation we had on the previous page. You often see this equation written three different ways because this says W, work is equal to 1 half Q times V, the charge and the, <clears throat> the potential difference to which it's moved. But you remember we have this equation which I like to call the capacitor equation, Q equals C times V. And I can take this equation, Q, and substitute it in here for this Q. So I'm going to substitute CV, the capacitance of the capacitor, and the voltage across the capacitor in here for this Q, and then I get that W, the work done or the energy stored is equal to one half C, this is this C, and I have an extra V, so it's V squared, the voltage squared. One half C V squared. Now I can also, in this equation, I can rearrange this equation, solve it for the voltage, okay? The voltage is equal to the charge divided by the capacitance. I can also substitute that in here and then you'll see we have Q squared over C. So this is another form of that same equation. The work, the energy stored is equal to one half Q squared over C. Okay, so that's the three ways, the three different ways you'll see this equation written. Once when you know the voltage and the charge, once we know the voltage and the capacitance, and once when you know the charge and the capacitance. Okay, so there you go. That's a brief introduction, a brief explanation as to how energy is stored in a capacitor and how much energy is stored or how much work is done to move those charges or to store that energy. Okay, in the next video, we'll do a couple simple calculations. You can link that video up in the upper right-hand corner of this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that helpful. If you did, please do all the following three things. Subscribe to my channel, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Please, write down there below, give me a thumbs up. That helps me out a lot. Give me a thumbs up. And then leave a nice positive comment in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.